Hello and welcome to 50 Fabulous Knits. My name is Pia. I am a Danish knitter coming to you this week from Texas. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. You know how much I've been longing to come here. If you're new to this channel, a big welcome to you. I really hope you'll enjoy this episode. I am in Texas visiting my son, my daughter-in-law, and my perfect and amazing grandson, who is little John John. I will talk a little more about my trip to Texas in, at the end of the episode, but I do seem to have quite a lot of knitting to share this week, so I better get started on that. Uh, before I start with the knitting, I'm just going to mention briefly our current knit along, the Knit and Be Kind Cow, a knit along where we focus on kindness in our knitting. All the details for, for the cow will be in my show notes and those you can find by clicking on the link in the description box below. Everything should be in there. So, knitting. I am wearing a finished object. This was a very spontaneous cast on. It is, of course, Caitlin Hunter's uh, Feel the Burn, a very, very beautiful pattern that I am so happy with. Um, it's available free on Ravelry and I guess always, also on uh, Boyland Network's, uh, her, her website. It is, I have only good things to say about this. The fit is amazing. The color work is beautiful and really easy. It's a quick knit and a great finished object. Uh, because it was such a spontaneous cast on, I didn't have the yarn for it. It's written for a worsted weight, but I did have some sport weight that I just knit up at a very loose gauge and then I went up a couple of sizes just to compensate for the, the thinner yarn. Uh, I did make a few modifications, yeah. I, um, I changed the color work a little up here. Uh, was a section where you would use three strands uh, on, on one row and I just couldn't be bothered with that. I knit this sitting on a beach in Dubai, so forgive me. Instead I just put in little flecks of turquoise. Uh, it's barely noticeable. Hang on a second. And I'm back. <laughs> I'm recording this in my son's home and his dog, Tyson, really do not like the new neighbor. So there, uh, hopefully he'll calm down. Anyway, the sweater, uh, the other modifications I made is I knitted a little longer than the pattern calls for and I also added a few uh, short rows uh, on the lower back just because it's my personal preference for these lighter summer tops. But yeah, it is beautiful. I am so happy with this and it is perfect for the Texas spring weather that we're having right now. I'm getting a lot of wear out of this. So only good things to say about this pattern. It is amazing. It is not the only finished object that I have to share with you this week. I don't know if you remember on the last podcast, I showed you I was knitting a sweater for Peter, my husband. I didn't finish that. It's, it's ginormous. So no, I didn't finish that. I'm stuck in a sea of stockinette, but I did finish this one. A matching sweater for a little John John uh, which is so much easier to show on the podcast because Peter's sweater will just block the whole screen. With this one, I can actually show you the details of the design. 
It is very, very simple. It's a top-down raglan, uh, very, very simple design. But I then added um, some, I think they're called Estonian braids when they are uh, one color, uh, but it's basically the same as a Latvian braid. So it's it's just it's just that is running uh, horizontally over the yoke, just to add some texture and interest to a very classic sweater. Uh, the yoke and the sleeves are knit in this uh, light gray and then I changed to a darker color for the body and I did do a little slip stitch pattern uh, where I changed the colors. So uh, Peter's will be exactly the same only he will have a folded uh, neckline but I think that was a bit much in, in the small size here. So John just has a, a regular ripped neckline. I am going to write up patterns for this sweater, the family sweater, I think I'm gonna call it, because I'm gonna write up the patterns starting from, I think three months uh, and then going up to three years and then uh, for men's sizes. I don't think I will do the the children I mean from 4 to 12 14 years whatever I don't think I'll be doing those right away because I don't have any models to try them on um, but but these I will write up the patterns as soon as possible send them into testing and then there will be a pattern for a a men's sweater and yeah I might as well show you Peter's I did put in some work on it every time I picked up John's sweater he was like mm, that does not look like my sweater so but he survived he can wait he's a big boy he's a very big boy just look at the sweater but as you see it's exactly the same thing uh, with the Estonian uh, braids on, on the yoke, the slip stitch pattern, and then just, hmm, yeah. I think it needs to be four inches long or something like that. I'm gonna try it on him tonight when he comes home and then we'll see how long I will be stuck on Body Island before I can start picking up the stitches for the sleeves. This would be perfect TV knitting. The thing is, we don't get to watch TV here because we're so busy doing fun stuff and being together. So, but if I don't finish it over here, I do have first and a 17 hour flight from here to Dubai and then six or seven hours from Dubai to Copenhagen. So I'll have time to work on this. I'll finish it. Of course I will finish it. But maybe not right away because I have a few new cast-ons. I, I will say in my defense that I sort of needed these cast-ons because of course I have been yarn shopping. Uh, you over here in the US, you have this wonderful thing called nitpicks. You can't get nit nitpicks in Denmark. Um, and I am loving these budget friendly squishy woolen yarns and the multitude of colors that they come in. So I bought some nitpicks palette in the blush colorway so I could get started on another half and half wrap, the Pearl Soho half and half triangles wrap. And of course I'm mid-row, why wouldn't I be? Uh, but yeah, I am enjoying this pattern so much. This is my happy knit. Uh, I have one on the needles at home in more autumnal colors, but I thought I needed one in 
and the one that I could use for summer. So uh, the first triangle is going to be this blush color and then the other triangle will be one of my own uh, yarns, an undyed base called Salt and Pepper. I'm just going to put in a, a picture because I'm sure you all know this sort of yarn where you have uh, one black strand and one white strand twisted together. I think that's going to look absolutely wonderful together with this blush. So yes, this I had waiting for me when I came here and I have enjoyed it, but, but not a lot. I mean, this is what one hour of knitting. He didn't, he didn't miss much work on his sweater with this one. The other cast on is also brand new and it's also with yarn from Knit Picks. It is a half shawl. So yeah, <laughs> not much to show. Look at me, I made a triangle. Uh, when my oldest granddaughter was born, I made a half shawl uh, to use like as a baby blanket for her. And it was so beautiful and it was so much fun to knit it. Unfortunately, it was obviously machine washed, which the mulberry silk and, and the cashmere didn't enjoy. So, uh, but I have for a while been thinking how I would love to make a, a half shawl, a more simple half shawl in a heavier yarn. So it could be this really squishy, blankety thing that I could just wrap myself up in. So I had ordered some wool of the Andes. Again, knit picks, yay! This is the colorway that is called Mink Heather. And actually, I had intended this for a sweater. I bought a sweater's, a sweater's quantity because I had intended this for a sweater. But then the other night I was like, I don't want to make a half shawl. A half shawl, that's just what I need. So I cast on for a half shawl. And it is going to be very, very simple. I'm just going to knit uh, a, a square. And then I'm going to do some feather and, and fern uh, around. And then some sort of lace edging to, to finish it off. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to working on this. And I'm knitting it the very open gauge so that when it blocks out, it's going to be drapey and airy and wonderful. And I am knitting this on another acquisition. Look at needles. I have been looking at these look at needles for such a long time. Um, returning viewers will remember that I bought a wooden needle um, circular for my airplane knitting. I bought this square thing, Cupics, and I really liked working with it, but it broke. It just plain broke in my hands. And I am not a tight knitter. I am a very loose knitter. I don't yank my needles, but it broke. So I'm not gonna buy more of those. Uh, I only had it for what, three or four weeks. Things shouldn't break that easily. So I invested in a, an interchangeable set of looking needles and I chose the short tips Again, because these are supposed to be the needles that I use for travel. Uh, and I have heard horror stories about people having their wooden needles taken in security. So I'm thinking these short ones, they're gonna let me keep those, aren't they? I hope. They're beautiful. I'm sure you all know these needles. They're made of driftwood, so they're like really smooth, much smoother than the other set of wooden needles I have. They're really a great joy to, to knit with. I'm liking them a lot. I'm not necessarily a fan of the cables who are 
they're a little stiff and but uh, I ran this one under very hot water and straightened it out a little and that really helped so I'm gonna do that with all of them so yeah I brought I brought the entire set I love the little pouches they come in it's this set that I bought um, they're not uh, the, the small needles, uh, they, they, I think they start at a 3.5 millimeters, something like that, and then goes up. But since they're wooden, I mean, it, it only makes sense not to, to make the really thin ones. So yeah, I'm hoping to get a lot of work out of these needles. Um, I also bought a little more yarn. I, I don't know. When I, when I travel, I really like to go to a local yarn shop and find some yarn that is spe uh, specific or special to the place I'm visiting. I know that nitpick yarns, we have lots of similar yarns in Denmark, but with Knit Picks, it's, it's the myriad of colors that just, it has my heart. And I love a good budget friendly yarn that, that I can, I knit a lot. This could become a very expensive hobby if I didn't sometimes choose the more budget friendly yarns. But I also bought something that wasn't Exactly budget friendly, but also not crazy. Nightshades from Harrisville Design. It's these glorious black yarns that has little, I wouldn't say flecks, and maybe it's flecks undertones to them. Uh, they come in different colors. I chose the one that has brown shades in it. But you can also get white and blue and red. I think a couple of other colors, but the brown really has my heart. I mean, black and brown, my yarn. I have not decided if this yarn should become um, a, a whole new design that I have in my mind, a very simple uh, boat neck sweater with a uh, a large uh, ripping edge up here, a little boxy short sweater, long sleeves, cozy thing. Uh, or if it should become one of my old designs, the Helga sweater. I'm just gonna put a photo so you can see that's also like a snuggly, nice, cozy sweater. I think this wants to be a cozy sweater because it's this American Cormo. It's so squishy and oh, just delicious. So I'm really looking forward to knitting this up. I also had the opportunity to buy some yarn from a dyer that I have been admiring for a long time. That is Stacy from Stress Knits. I love her podcast and I love her colors. I mean, aren't they just beautiful? Just look at them. This is called Figgy and it is this beautiful and amazing variegated colorway with a lot of um, rose and beige and a little bit of green just to pique the interest. And this one is the winter floral colorway, which, <laughs> how beautiful is this? What I want to do with these two is I want to make a big shawl. I want a shawl kick. Yeah, I am. I want to make a big triangular shawl uh, in a, a soft cream color and then have some um, uh, some color work with these two, make some flowers and greenery, uh, 
garlands going over the shawl. I think that could be absolutely adorable with these two. So that's my plan for for these ones. And until that happens, I'm just gonna mm, pet them and hug them and enjoy them in all their gloriousness. The only other thing I bought is actually not yarn. It is a practical thing. I do have a lot of knitting needles because I tend to have many projects on the go and often it's like um, I will only knit on size four millimeters or I will only knit on my three millimeters. So I have quite a lot of, of knitting needles uh, and I have one a set of Chaoku interchangeable and one set of Haya Haya Sharps and they were all over the place. I know they come in nice little bags and you can just put them there but so I bought this one from Magpie Fibers where I can keep all of my metal needles. So I mean just look at this. How organized am I? Hmm? This is new. <laughs> but I am loving this. I have my, uh, let me see if I can. I have my Chalcos up here, my higher, higher sharps here. Then I have my minis here, all the cords, some dog hair, my sock needles, small scissors. I can keep everything in here and I never have to run around well I do have to run around to find this but I don't have to run around to find three or four different bags where I might have a needle or a cord or whatever I'm needing so very very happy with this one uh, this perfect for me Do you have another dream knitting project? Because last time I was here, my lovely daughter-in-law, Maria, asked if I could crochet a blanket for her. Uh, and we were looking at different options. We were, of course, looking at granny strat blankets or granny square blankets. But then I found this. Ah, uh, this is very difficult to show. I'm gonna show the pattern picture instead. It's the Solitude Blanket. It is written for um, the Knit Collage, Spun Cloud and Wildflower. So it's a luxurious knit. But um, last time I chose some very cheap yarn that I found in Michael's. It's chenille like I don't know what you call these yarns in, in English but they're super cheap they're super soft and squishy and nice they're 100% acrylic and usually I don't care much for acrylic yarns but this yarn for this project is just perfect so I think I am gonna go to Michael's and find some more of this yarn and knit one of these solid uh, crochet one of these solitude blankets for myself because this is just so nice so yes i did buy some yarn i don't I, I don't think i went overboard there's not more yarn that i can knit up over the summer i guess i hope that's my plan i do have plans for everything that i bought I also have plans for some more yarn shopping. Friday afternoon, I am meeting up with a podcast viewer, hi Linda, who very kindly offered to take me yarn shopping. Uh, she has promised to find a nice local yarn shop where we can go and then we're going to go and have coffee and a little treat after and I can't wait. Ah, 
of course they aren't, but also the chance to meet one of the viewers in person. I'm so looking forward to that. I do have plans for my purchases. I would like to find some substitute yarn <laughs> for this. What I wanted to do with this yarn was actually make a very simple striped summer top. Um, and I do have a lot of leftovers, but I am going to need a few, one or two skeins more, I think. So I hope that I will find something to match this. Maybe I should be wearing this sweater so I can check that it's actually matching. And of course, I will also be looking for the perfect yarn uh, to mix with the stress knits yarn that I bought. Uh, some cream colored, soft, niceness for a show but who knows what i'll find i'm sure i'll be inspired once i'm there i've never been to a local yarn shop uh, here in texas before because the first time i was here i was super busy all the time there was no time for yarn shopping uh, and since then we've had the covid with lockdowns and, and whatnot but now everything is open here in texas which is really really nice that was it for the creative content this week. That wasn't so bad. I don't know why I had this feeling that I would be talking for hours. Maybe it's because it's a bit difficult to talk about projects that are my own designs that I'm still working on. It's, it's difficult to go into a lot of details because often I don't know where the yarn will take me, the knitting will take me. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna now just chat a little about life in general, my trip over here. If you're not interested, I just wanna say thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time. So yeah, my trip, life over here. It is, it's so wonderful. I don't have any words. It is amazing to finally be here. My son and my daughter-in-law has been living all over the world. Uh, he used to be a professional jiu-jitsu uh, fighter, athlete, and they have been living in Abu Dhabi in, in the UAE. They've been living in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil. Uh, and then back in 2018, they decided that they wanted to go to the US. My son suffered a severe knee injury and he had lots and lots of surgeries, but it never became good enough uh, to to be able to carry him uh, through the professional career. So he decided that he would fulfill his dream about one day teaching and building a Jiu Jitsu Academy himself. And he decided that the place to do that would be in Texas. So they came to Denmark uh, to, to stay with us while they were working on uh, getting their green cards and uh, while well, doing all the, the stuff that you have to do when you move from one country to the other. And they actually ended up staying with us for almost two years. Uh, and during that time, little John John was born. He was born in my home. He was my baby. Well, maybe not really mine, but we were very, very close. And when they left and they actually took him with them, it was like they took part of my heart. They came here in January, 2020, just in time for COVID to hit them. So it's been difficult building a Jiu Jitsu Academy during a pandemic because there's not much social distancing in Jiu Jitsu. But they've made it, they managed, and I'm super proud. Uh, I wish 
they were in Denmark, but they're not. Uh, so I'm just so happy to be visiting them. And yeah, Jan Jan and I are having a lot of fun together. He started calling me Nana. Oh. He speaks only in English, which is really interesting because the, the language in the home is Portuguese, both my son and, and obviously my daughter-in-law who is from Brazil, they speak Portuguese together. But John John is American, he speaks, he speaks English and I'm happy because then I can actually talk with him. Uh, every afternoon the whole family goes to the academy uh, to train and teach and hang out. Uh, but sometimes John John and I will stay home and just have a quiet afternoon, just the two of us. And that is, I'm in heaven. It is so much fun. We just, oh, we enjoy ourselves. The first week has been more about settling in and uh, fixing some practical stuff. But I hope that we from now on will have time to do just a little bit of touristy stuff too. I really want to see South Fork Ranch. I want to go look for Miss Ellie and JR. The family's like, what? When I ask them. I also want to go see the cattle drive in Fort Worth. I think I can get them to do that. And I know that we're going to go to the zoo because John John's birthday, his second birthday is coming up and he is crazy about all sorts of animals. So we're definitely going to the zoo for his birthday. Um, sometimes I hear people call Texas a flyover state and I'll just say don't do that don't fly over Texas if you have any chance go to Texas it is a happy happy place and not just because my family is here the main attraction in Texas that's definitely the people everyone here are so friendly they're so kind and welcoming i love being here i do however have one problem there is so much yummy food that is easily available all the time i don't know if i were to live here i'd be completely out of control every time you open your mouth something delicious comes into it but aside from that, I am enjoying Texas a whole lot. And I'm enjoying spending time with my family. Uh, we are here for four weeks. So only one week has passed, ah, almost two. I'm not gonna think about that. We are really enjoying ourselves. My husband, Peter, he goes and trains with Alexander, my son, every day, sometimes two times a day. So he is, he's, he's tired. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I cannot seem to get tired because I have my baby. Um, I am going to continue to enjoy myself. I really hope that you're enjoying yourself wherever you are. I hope that you're happy. I hope that you have the opportunities to, to surround yourself with little pockets of joy. They're to be found almost everywhere. Uh, I hope you're enjoying some nice weather. I cannot get over how beautiful Texas weather is. It's like summer here. It is so wonderful. I will be back hopefully next week with an episode in English. I am going to try to record both in Danish and, F and English next week. If not, I will definitely be back in two weeks and I really hope to see you again then. Take care and stay safe.